Offer of employment, skilled immigrants express entry. Offer of arranged employment. If you have a job offer, offer of arranged employment, you need to update your express entry profile in your account with the start date, employer name and address, labor market impact assessment LMIA number, if you have one, national occupational classification NOC code related to the job. Your job offer must be in writing and not from an embassy, high, high commission, or consulate in Canada. Set out details of the job they're offering you, such as your pay and deductions, your job duties, condition of employment, like your hours of work. A work permit is on its own. It's not a job offer, even if it's an open one per work permit. Your job offer must also meet other criteria to be valid on the express entry program. Federal skilled workers in Canadian experience class. A valid job offer has to be made by one employer, continuous, paid, full time at least 30 hours a week, for at least one year after. CIC issue your permanent resident visa. Cannot be not seasonal and not a contract basis. In a job that is an NLC a skill type zero or skill level A or B. It also must be made by an employer with a new positive LMIA that approves the offer and names and names you and your position. Or if you're currently working in Canada in an NLC 0A or B job on a work permit that was issued based on an LMIA and you working for an employer listed on your work permit, you're authorized to work in Canada on the day you apply for permanent resident visa and when the visa is issued. Your current employer made you an offer to give you a full-time job for at least one year if you're accepted as permanent resident. or if you have a valid work permit for an NLC 0A or B job that is exempt from needing an LMIA and you are currently working for an employer specifi specifying the work permit, have one year of full-time work experience or equal amount of part-time work for that employer, and have a valid job offer from that employer of at least one year after CIC issued your permanent resident visa. Federal skilled trade workers. You need to have a valid job offered and it has to be made by up to two employers for continuous pay full time work at least 30 hours a week for at least one year. In a skilled occupation jobs with 2016 NOC code that start with 7, 72, 73, 82, 92, as well as 632 or 633. It also must be made by an employer who have a new positive LMIA that approves the, the offer and names you and your position. Or, if you're currently working in Canada in a skilled trade job, a work permit that was issued based on a positive LMIA, and you're working for an employer listed on your work permit, you're authorized to work in Canada on the day you apply for permanent resident visa and when the visa is issued. Your current employer or employers offer you a full-time job if you reaccepted as a permanent resident in a job that is in the same three-digit level of the NOC as your current job of at least one year, or you have a valuable permit for one of the listed skilled trade occupation and is exempt from needing an LMIA, and you are currently working for an employer specified on the work permit have one year of full-time work experience of an equal amount of part-time work for the employers or employers on your work permit who is making the offer and have a valid job offer from the employer for at least one year after CIC issued your permanent resident visa. Example of a valid and no valid job offer. In both examples, the LMIA supports the job offer as said at set out above and is or is exempt for needing an LMIA. So in example one, 
Two companies hire heavy equipment operator. The LMIA lists both. Each employer is offering 16 hours of work per week for a minimum of one year. This job offer is valid. Example 2. A construction company offers a plumber a position for 25 hours per week. It's on a non-contract basis. The job is symbolic. A job must be for at least 30 hours a week to be full-time. Job exempt from needing an LMIA. There are only two reasons the employer making you the offer doesn't need to get a new LMIA. If you're already working for them with a work permit based on that LMIA, if you work in a job that doesn't need an LMIA, your employer must get a new LMIA if your work permit has expired, you're working on an open work permit, and you have a job offer for an employer not listed on, the, on your work permit. LMIA exempt job offers. In, mo ca in most cases, your employer needs a labor market impact assessment, LMIA, to support your job offer. Some jobs are exempt for needing an LMIA. For express entry, your employer doesn't need an LMIA if you have been working full-time for the employer on your work permit for at least one year or an equal amount of part-time work have a valid job offer and have a valid work permit that is exempt from LMIA under an international agreement, a federal provincial agreement, or a Canadian interest category. Note, for skilled trade jobs, up to two employers can make a job offer. You must work for both those employers. Jobs exempt from the LMIA you may be exempt from needing an LMIA for express entry if your current employer job is LMIA exempt. State a specified employer or employers for skilled trade jobs for up to two employers can make a job offer and is covered by international agreements like NAFTA or GATS and non-trade agreements. This can include professionals, traders and investors. Covered by an agreement between Canada and a province or territory. This includes significant investment projects. Exempt for Canadian interest reasons. Among the reasons for exempt for the Canadian interest, we can find the significant benefit. If your employer can prove you will bring an important social, cultural, or economic benefit to Canada, this can include general, self-employed engineers, technical workers, creative and performing artists, etc. Worker transfer within a company, intra-company transferee with specialized knowledge, only those that will benefit Canada with their skill and experience. Workers under the Mobilité Francophone, uh, you also can get it through reciprocal employment. Less foreign workers get jobs in Canada when Canadians have similar opportunities in other countries. Generals such as professional coaches and athletes working for Canadian teams, international experience in Canada, a work abroad program for youth and young professionals, people in exchange programs like professors and visiting lecturers. Also can be by, designed by the minister. Academics including researchers, guest lecturers and visiting professors and sponsored through the recognized federal program. Competitiveness and policy, uh, policy, medical residents and fellows, postdoctoral fellows, and people who have won academic awards from Canadian schools, and charity and religious work, not including volunteers. These categories can be exempt only if you also meet the criteria. Notes: Jobs that are exempt for needing an MIA need, need still need a work permit. So you will need a work permit even that you are exempt of LMIA. Can you do the job? Uh, CSE officers must be convinced that you will be capable of doing the work you offer. 
likely qualify for to be licensed or certified by the relevant regulatory body once you're in Canada, if the job is regulated in Canada. Provinces and territories are responsible for desi designing professions and trades in their jurisdiction. Designation and certification requirements vary by province. Get more information on licensing and regulatory requirements for specific professions or contact the relevant body in the province or territory where you plan to live. Proof of funds, skilled immigrants express entry. When are you required to proof of funds? You must show that you have enough money to support yourself and your family in Canada to meet the minimum requirements of the Federal Skilled Worker Program or the Federal Skilled Trades Program. You can't borrow this money from another person. You must be able to use this money to pay the cost of living for your family, even if they are in common with you. If your spouse is coming with you, you can count money you have together in a joint account. You may be able to count money in an account under their name only, but you must prove you have access to the money. If you are invited to apply, you must give written proof that you have this money. You don't need to show that you have enough money to support yourself and your family to meet the program requirements of the Canadian Experience class. These include provincial nominees who are part of the CSC, CS, CEC stream. When it is not required to prove of funds. You don't need to show that you have enough money to support yourself and your family to meet the program requirement for the Canadian Experience class. This include provincial nominees who are part of the CEC stream. Know that you don't need to prove a proof of fund if you are currently authorized to work in Canada and have a valid job offer. Keep your forms up to date in your profile. The system may find that you are eligible for more than one program. You don't always know ahead of time which program you will be invited under. How much money you will need. The amount of money you need to support your family is set by the size of your family. To calculate the size of your family, you must include yourself, your spouse or partner, your dependent children, and your spouse dependent children. This includes your spouse or dependent children who are permanent residents of Canadian citizens. You will need to show proof that you have enough money when you apply to immigrate. Require funds. Number of family members. For one person, the fund required will be 12,300. For two, 15,312. For three, 18,825. For four, 22,856. For five, 25,923. For six, 29,236. For seven, 32,550. And for each additional family member, 3,314 on the LICO of the current The required funds are based on the LICO that uh, are always updated by the Government of Canada. So we need to check always the latest update every year uh, so you have the actual numbers. What Immigration Canada accept as proof? The fund must be available to you. For example, you can use equity on real property as proof of settlement funds. The fund must be available for both when you apply and when if we issue a permanent resident visa. You must prove to an immigration officer that you can legally assess them to use to settle here when you arrive. For Proof, you must get official letter from any bank or financial institutions when you are keeping money. Letters must be printed on the financial institution letterhead. 
include their contact information like address, telephone number and email address, include your name, list outstanding debts such as credit card debt and loans, include for each current bank and investment account, account numbers, the day each account was opened, the current balance of each account, the average balance for the past six months. How much money should you bring? Research how much it costs to live in the place where you plan to settle in Canada. Different uh, provinces have different costs of living, so you need to do your research for that. Bring as much money as you can to make moving and finding a home in Canada easier. Canadian custom regulations require you to declare if you are bringing more than 10,000 Canadian dollars into Canada. If you don't tell them, and this is very important, you may be fine and your funds could be seized. So it's important to declare when you enter Canada how much money you have is, if you have an amount of more than $10,000 Canadian dollars. This includes cash, documents that show property or capital payable to you, such as stocks, bonds, debentures, and treasury bills. Documents that guarantee payment of a set amount of money which are payable to you, such as bankers' draft, checks, travel checks, money orders. Updates to fund requirements. A CSE updates the proof of fund numbers every year based on a 50% of the low income cutoff totals. The changes are small, but there is a chance it could affect your delivery. Yeah. And it change the number from one year to another can make you not be eligible. So it's important to always check the latest numbers for the LICO. And be sure to check the new numbers to your own once they're posted. Always need to be checking. So it's better to be informed with the latest information and CIC website can provide you with that information. Just look for the low income core off or any a specific problem and you'll be able to find uh, that, that information. Thank you. Section summary. Uh, we have gone to the end of this section and we can review the things that we learn. We learn about the language requirements uh, or the express entry and different programs. We also learn about education credential assessment, how important they are and what institutions can provide us those assessments. And uh, also in this uh, section we have the links to those institutions. We, we learn what is the NOC and how can we find an NOC uh, code for your occupation and the details on how to choose the right one for your application. We also review the Express Entry Comprehensive Ranking System, the CRS, we understand why it is and what are the factors uh, the officers are looking for to evaluate your profile. We learn how to create an Express Entry Profile and we also learn how to register in the Job Bank and we uh, recommended some videos uh, also on YouTube uh, that are included in the lecture and also some links that can help you to get better information about the presentry profile and the job bank. And we also, oh, in the last lecture, we talk about your offer and the importance of proof of funds and LICO and how that can impact your application. So I hope uh, this section was useful. Uh, you can uh, uh, review the information, the, all the resources provided, all the links, and also all the assessment uh, tools. Thank you very much.